This is a bladeless fan. It blows fast moving air through these little slits around the oval. Whenever a fluid moves fast, it has a lower pressure. So this lower pressure sucks in air around the room. The bladeless fan companies like Dyson call this air multiplication. You can see if I put some smoke on the back that it does indeed suck air through this big hole in the middle. So we end up with more air being blown than we started with. You can see this even more clearly if you take a big bag like this and then ask someone to blow it up. Now they might do something like this and just start taking some breaths and blowing it in the bag. You can see this is going to take a while to blow up the whole bag, but you can actually do it with just one breath. All you have to do is go like this. It blows it up instantly. So the moving air was able to drag in air from around the room and fill up the bag really fast. This happens because the moving air creates low pressure that sucks in air from around the room into the stream. But the weird thing about this is you don't magically get more energy just by moving it away from your mouth. Both breathing close to the bag and away from the bag took about the same amount of energy blowing. So in terms of an energy balance, we have enough energy to blow up the bag in one breath, but we didn't have enough air. So to get more air, we used fast moving air to suck in slower moving air from around the room. And that amount of slow moving air can fill up the bag. So this experiment might lead you to believe that these bladeless fans might be super efficient way more efficient than a normal fan. In fact, if you just do a quick Google search about bladeless fans, you'll see that all the sources say that they're quieter and more efficient than regular fans. But is this really the case? Well, today I'm going to be testing out a bladeless fan and a normal fan to see if the bladeless fan really uses less power than a regular fan. Now, one thing we have to understand about bladeless fans first is they're not really bladeless. They actually do have fan blades, but they're just hidden in the base here. And these fan blades are what's sucking air and air through the bottom and pushing it around these gaps here. We're going to test how much wind speed is created at the same power consumption for both of these types of fans. Now, in order to test this, I have a watt meter and an anemometer. An anemometer is just a device that measures wind speed. So it turns this little blade in here, and depending on the rate that that really frictionless blade in there is turning, it knows the wind speed that's blowing through it. Okay, so let's plug in our bladeless fan. Okay, both of them are gonna be 33 inches away from the edge here. Okay, it's on the highest setting now, and we are using 4.9 watts, so we're just gonna call it five watts that this is using right now at the high speed. Okay, it's up here for some reason. So I'm at 1.6 meters per second. I think that's the highest value. Okay, so here's a view where you can see it a little better. We're at 1.4 meters per second up here. And we're using five watts back there, right here, 4.9. Now we're gonna test our desktop fan. So with this one, I'm going, it only has three speeds. So to try to match the five watts, I'm gonna use this variac here so I can change the voltage. So basically I can control the speed of the fan at any speed it continuously. So just by turning this, I can change the speed of it. This one can get really high. <laughs> but we're gonna turn it down. Oh, it's using a lot of power. So we're at, even at this low speed, we're at 19 watts. So don't know if this is gonna work. If I turn it down, which is six watts, the blades are barely even moving. So I can only get it to turn at like eight watts. And that's like barely even moving any air. So this fan is definitely not the fan to use for this. So these are meant to run at high voltage, high power to output a lot of air. So this isn't a good comparison to the smaller fan that uses way less power. Instead, I'm going to be using this fan. This is actually probably a better comparison because this is a DC motor, just like the bladeless fan was also a DC motor. Okay, let's turn it on. Okay, so on the bottom here, it's showing the watts used. Okay, so we're at 4.9 watts. Let's see how much air this generates. Okay, so I'm at 1.8 meters per second. And also, it's easy to tell, this is a lot bigger area that I'm picking up wind speed. So I can pick it up over here, all the way, you can see the blade spinning here. You can see how I get this full breadth of area here. It's like this big that is blowing the air. So 
We've got 4.8, 4.9 watts in the back, and we're 1.8 meters per second down here. So you can see we're getting the same as or faster airspeed with a regular fan compared to the bladeless fan. In fact, we're moving a lot more air, so there's a lot more airflow at a higher speed with just the regular fan. But as you can see, with just different types of fans and different motors, there's all sorts of different efficiencies. So I think a better comparison would be to use the exact same fan in both cases. So I'm going to take the fan out of the base of the bladeless fan and see if it's more efficient when it's outside of the base than when it's inside of the base blowing through those tiny slits. Okay, so here's the fan in the base. So it should blow out the front here. So it's just blowing out here and in the fan they have it directed up through these slits. So now let's see how much air blows if I don't put it through the bladeless portion, meaning I'm not directing it through these tiny slits. Now the motor's completely out of it. I'm gonna turn it on. Okay, we're at five watts. Let's see what our max wind speed is now. Okay, well look at that. We're getting up to two. So 2.1, but if I just put it back in the base, but then when I put the slits back on, it's only at 1.4 using the same amount of watts. In the end, we actually lost efficiency when we put this base over it and made it have to come out these slits. And when you think about it, it makes sense because you're sucking in air here anyways. Why do you have to try to suck in air through the back here? What good does that do you? You might as well just not restrict the fan at all, take this off and just let it blow. So the reason that the bladeless fan doesn't outperform a normal fan is because a normal fan also entrains air on the side. So both a regular fan and a bladeless fan pull in air from the side. But the bladeless fan also pulls in air through the center. But because it has pulled in air in the center, that fast moving air that's coming out of the slits gets slowed down because it's hitting air that's coming in through the center that's not moving fast. So overall, the overall air speed slows down. Now maybe these could be more beneficial with a specific type of fan that you can put in the center that you couldn't use outside of it. So there could be some benefits that way, but in the experiment I just did, I really don't see any benefit to a bladeless fan. Now one thing people really like is that bladeless fans are usually quiet, but you can see that that's just because the power consumption is much lower and the amount of air it moves is much lower than just a normal traditional cheap fan. But if you compare the amount of wind moved per energy used, the bladeless fan doesn't beat out a traditional fan. Now this fan was like $50 to buy. Some of the expensive Dyson ones can get up to like $600, $700. And I don't see why that would be more beneficial than just having a regular fan. But I did forget to mention one of the main reasons why people buy a bladeless fan. Hey Joanna, check out my new fan. Why? It's bladeless. Oh, you seem way cooler now. And thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you liked it. If you haven't subscribed yet, remember to hit that subscribe button and we'll see you next time.